Hey guys, it's Fullcast here, live and direct from Brooklyn, New York City. Let's go. In front of me today, I have a box of 2021 22 Leaf Art of Hockey. Smash it like Rocky. Except, no, I've actually already smashed this box. You can check out this break uh, that I already have posted. You know what, guys? I'm going to do something a bit different today. And by the way, I will be breaking Synergy uh, either on Wednesday or Thursday for Sheezy, the new Synergy. So, you know, I've been involved in a lot of group breaks, and I'm at the point where I really believe you can target cards directly on eBay a lot more safely, you know, 100% accuracy than getting involved in some gambling addiction. I think we have to be very careful with group breaks and be very thoughtful, uh, really, you know, be dynamic in terms of checking out the checklist and understanding the checklist. So I thought I'd do an experiment, a thought experiment, a practical experiment for you guys. So what I did do is across three different breaks on eBay, I bought name spots, not team spots, name spots, 32 different names over three breaks. Some of them were duplicates from break to break. And on average, I paid about $15 a spot. Now, of course, if you buy a Mario spot, it's gonna cost you 50 bucks or whatnot. While if you buy like an Elmer Locke, who's got one name on the checklist and it's not even an auto because he's deceased, that might be a 2.99 spot. So what did I get for the price of these 32 spots times 15? I think it came out to about, I mean, I'm just, I, don't, I haven't even done the math, but I know that I paid $480 American. And the reason why I chose to pay $480 American, it's the price of two boxes. So what can I get for two boxes worth of spots if I'm very strategic in analyzing the checklist and picking names that are good value? Well, let me show you guys what I hit. Uh, this, you guys will not believe this. So this is crazy, man. So I don't even know if I can fit them in here. So you see this? So those are the Jersey cards and relics. And these are the autos. So this is, these are my winnings, guys. Here, let me get the box out of the way and I'll show you guys what my winnings were uh, at that price point of $480, which I know it's a lot of money for you guys. I'm not saying it's not, uh, but it is the equivalency of, you know, two boxes of art, Leaf Art of Hockey out of the gate. I, I know on Steel City Collectible, they're up for about six, 250 all in per box, right? So I came out with some 23 cards is what I got for the price of those two boxes. Normally with two boxes, you get eight cards total, right? You get four uh, autos total. Instead, I have 23 hits here. This is what I want by being strategic. So I'll show you what I won and I can tell you which names I hit and so, and so on. So let's go through them fairly quickly. So, and by the way, the craziest thing about it is I was involved in about 10 um, randoms of, you know, fifth flip a coin randoms or for the trip autos or quad autos or eight way jerseys. And I only won two of those 10, two of those, 10, or maybe three of the 10. So I was hit batting around 30%. Most of them were coin flips, but they aren't all coin flips. So I should average around maybe 40%. So I did poorly in the randoms, yet this is what I hit. So number to 45, we have a Brian Trache and Mike Bossy. And I'm just gonna fly through them. So then I have a Vinny Le Cavalier Martin Saint Louis. I had bought the uh, Vinny Le Cavalier spot and I won that random. True of the Trotchy as well, I, I think had the bossy spot and, and won that random. So those are randoms I won. Uh, so Billy Smith here, number to 45, Relic. I mean, this is how crazy it is. Uh, the Vinny spot I had fairly cheaply, number to 45. So these are pretty ho-hum relics, I have to admit. Uh, I had the Chelio spot. I don't know how much I paid for it. I didn't pay much for it. Maybe eight bucks because he has multiple autos. He has quite a few cards on the checklist. Uh, I don't even know what this is. This is number to five purple, I think is what it is. And these should all be game used relics. They might not say exactly what the relics are. Uh, this grant here, I think the spot was probably about eight bucks, I'm guessing for this spot. Uh, yeah, so this is another grant Fuhrer. I mean, you guys can see the numbering or you can't see the numbering, it's up to you. Uh, zoom in if you have to. Uh, also this same Grand Fear from the same break. So this is number to nine, another relic. I mean, just crazy guys. When you think about it, like the price of two boxes. Uh, so this is um, a Hashik. I bought the Hashik spot. So it's number to 20, this one. I hit two Hashik cards actually. And that Hashik probably was like a $25 spot, my get best guess. I hit multiple Gila Fleurs, number to 45, Relic of Gila Fleur. Uh, flower probably goes for about 30 bucks, I guess. And this is unbelievable, this one here. Really, really cool looking Terry Sawchuk. Uh, I think it's number to eight, but you know, this spot was a cheap spot. I don't think a lot of people bid on it, so probably a $4 spot. I did secure a couple of Mario's 
I think in two breaks I secured the Mario spot, which was upwards of maybe 45 bucks, number to 45. But if you go to his checklist, he's got like multiple cards. He's got like 16 cards on the checklist or something like that. I hit this carry price. These are really cool. Carry price, hitting carry price in a leaf product is like winning the lottery because he has so few cards. Number three of three, beautiful jersey relic of carry price, museum materials. I mean, and all of these, most of these, by the way, except for the bronzes are obviously parallels. Now this was my best random because I think I had only one name. I had the Gila Fleur in this one and they did the random eight way random and I won. So that was my lucky win on the randoms. For multiple triple and quad autos, I did not hit at all. I did not win a single triple or quad auto even though I was involved in like four of them. All right, so on to the autos. So these are the ones I, you know, I'm an autos guy. Uh, Dickie Moore, uh, yeah, I mean, this guy this is a retired number. Dickie Moore is like a big deal in Montreal. So really, really cool to get this one. This spot was very, very nominal. I can tell you that. And I'm not even sure what it says there. Is it a four? I can't even, that almost looks rubbed off the number. These are the ones I cherish the most. Um, Vinny de the Cavalier spot, two of two. Very, very cool looking card. Uh, nominal n uh, amount for him. I probably paid like six bucks for that spot. Marcel Dion was an expensive spot. I think I overpaid. I paid something like 20 bucks or something, or maybe 17, which is a little bit high for Marcel Dion. Again, you can check his, uh, on eBay, you can bid directly on the cards and maybe they only cost 22 bucks. So why are you in a group break is the question. But I did fortunately with that spot, I actually hit, uh, I actually hit two Marcel Dion's. So that's the benefit there. And this one's number to five, right? Obviously it's Leaf, so there's sticker autos for the most part. Uh, I bought the bossy spot and hit an eight of eight bossy. Really, really cool bossy card. That's like, that's just sick to me. That is just sick. Um, you know, rest in peace. And this is where I really did well. I hit a Guy Leffler two of three museum art um, auto, you know, is that a jersey? I don't even know what that is. It could be any piece of memorabilia. It's so filthy, interestingly. Um, continuing on. So I did hit some Lafleurs. So here's the Dominic Kashik I mentioned. Uh, he, again, he probably cost about 25, 26 bucks. I'm not really sure. I can't remember, but really, really nice uh, to hit a Dominic Kashik, even though it's number 30, probably a base is my best guess. I actually hit a Marty Boudreau three of three. So what's interesting about this, again, if you're bidding on the Marty, you have to sort of bid maybe upwards of 30 bucks. Uh, I think I bid less, but I really wanted to hit him in one break, so I did it and I actually hit him. So this is where I did excellently. I did buy some Mario's. I did hit that jersey earlier on, and I hit this Mario as well, which pays for the break, of course. And it's the Walk on Water, which are some of the nicest art cards, I'd say. Very cool looking cards. And my last card here, this is my very last card, so let's slow the roll it a bit. Uh, it is a horizontal card, and this and this was a random by the way and i did in fact hit the Guy Lafleur, and this was the one card i wanted in the entire set iconography uh number to 12 mario you just don't see very many lafleur mario autos and they both have such clean beautiful almost similar autos in a sense so really cool right unfortunately as i said i was in 10 randoms i think i won three of them in hindsight as i think about it now and I had multiple opportunities, I had two other opportunities of cards like this and didn't, there was a bossy trache that I missed out on and I can't remember what the other one was. Uh, it might've been a Billy Smith something, I can't recall. And then I absolutely missed out on trips and uh, some other um, Jersey coin flips. So I think I was actually unlucky except for the fact that I hit all those cards in the break because I was that strategic. So that's basically it guys. The entire point of this was to mention and note that you can target cards directly on eBay cheaper than you can in breaks. So really what are we paying for? We're paying for the experience of breaks, the adrenaline rush, the gambling addiction. So I think we have to be very mindful of what we're doing and be a lot more methodical because if we were going to sort of, you know, not have self-restraint and get into these breaks and overpay and, and behave manically is sort of the best word I could use for it. 
we really need to analyze checklists and be smart about it. Now I did make out like a bandit. I did really poorly though in the cards I really wanted, which were the multiple, the three-way autos and so on. So I didn't do well in those. I did do well in terms of my targeted cards to even be in those draws because I analyzed the checklist. So that's the point of it. Uh, also, I must mention again that when I bought this box, it was under, it was like 90 some odd dollars and you know, all in with shipping and tax, it was $114, I believe. So I didn't overpay for the box. And then when I went and did group breaks for the price of actual boxes, I ended up getting, what did I say, some 23 cards? So that's 15 more cards than I would have gotten had I just bought the boxes. On the other hand, do I really need all these cards? Maybe I should have just have targeted five cards online with discipline with 100% certainty on eBay. So these are the things we really have to think about, man, but I'm gonna say it again and I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna hit you guys over the head with it. Analyze your checklist, analyze your checklist, analyze your checklist, and then don't overbid and factor in your shipping and all the stuff. Like I, one of the reasons why it came out to 480 and not less than that is that I had to pay for shipping and I did have to pay for tax as well on these spots, but all in it was about $480 for those uh, 23 cards and like I said, some 32 spots, okay? And of course the spots, the spots that didn't hit, by the way, I had a Henderson, I had a Guy Carboneau. Um, you know, there's some, I had uh, Doug Gilmore, he probably got me into some uh, multi-ways that I didn't win. But, so you have to also balance the fact that you're paying maybe $40 for a Mario spot or $50. I've seen that spot go for over $100, by the way. Uh, and counterweighting it with some other sort of, you know, higher leverage ones that don't cost as much, let's say a Billy Smith or something. Uh, and I was really targeting Lafleur. That was the one I really wanted. So I was paying about $33 for his spot and I hit him. But again, you can find high numbered Lafleur autos on eBay probably for less than the spot, obviously. So. That's basically it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this was a really fun exercise. This is actually one of the funnest exercises I've done in a while because it was successful. It was successful. Uh, I love you guys. Uh, do me the honor of sub liking, hashtagging, and drawing. Stay tuned for my synergy break uh, coming up. And I do want to also talk about the OPG miscut cards because I don't, I personally don't think, I think it's intentional, but we'll talk about that in another break. Full of cards live and direct from a place called Brooklyn, New York City. Mm -hmm.